Coming up on Mill Cyber Sync, a top Russian hacker pleads guilty in Florida. Also ahead, Apple announcing groundbreaking security capabilities across its devices. We've got those stories and more, so get ready to get in sync with Mill Cyber Sync. You're watching the Mill Cyber Sync podcast with Nick Thomas and Layla Guland. Hello and welcome to the Mill Cyber Sync podcast, reporting on the latest events happening in cyber news. I'm Layla Guland with your host, Nick Thomas. Great to see you again. Good to see you again, Layla. Let's get started. All right. Well, just a reminder, if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're watching us on our YouTube channel, click on that notification bell for our latest posts. Well, the first ever group of encryption tools that could potentially withstand the attack of a quantum computer have been selected. The U.S. Department of Commerce's National Institute of Standards and Technology, or NIST, have homed in on four algorithms that will now reportedly become part of their post-quantum cryptographic standard, which should be finalized in about two years. For general encryption, NIST has selected the Crystals Kyber algorithm for digital signatures. And for that, NIST has selected three algorithms, Crystals Dilithium, Falcom, and Sphinx Plus. For more algorithms could be included in the standard and developed a robust variety of defense tools. The finalists from that round will be announced at a future date. Nick? NATO has announced plans to develop virtual rapid response capabilities to respond to significant malicious cyber events. The declaration also outlined an agreement between member countries on a voluntary basis and using national assets to build and exercise a virtual rapid response cyber capability. The latest summit has taken on extra significance in light of Russian invasion of Ukraine earlier this year. NATO heads of state and governments participating in the summit also pledged to accelerate the delivery of non-lethal defense equipment to Ukraine, including boosting the country's cyber resilience. Russia has launched numerous cyber operations against Ukraine since it began the invasion in February. This includes targeting Ukraine's national telecommunications provider in April, causing significant internet outages across the region. Leila? Russia is continuing to wedge a divide between Ukraine and the West through disinformation and influence campaigns. These efforts are being conducted by state-controlled media, known covert intelligence outlets, and known propaganda and disinformation amplifiers. France, Germany, Poland, and Turkey are the primary targets for these influence operations. But the U.S. and Western voters have been targeted by key Russian influence ops through misinformation about Ukraine being responsible for the cost of living crisis. Fake news efforts are also portraying Ukrainian refugees as negatively impacting their host countries, such as a stabbing in Warsaw by three drunk Ukrainian men. Nick? Wow. The 8th Annual Cyber Yankee Exercise brought together National Guard teams from across New England, along with other military services and the private sector, to practice fending off cyber attacks. Cyber Yankee pits defenders against attackers in a set of realistic events and replicated networks using the persistent cyber training environment. Held at Camp Net in Connecticut, the exercise provided participants with valuable insights and tactical experience that can now be applied in the real world. Cyber attacks on U.S. critical infrastructure are on the rise. Ransomware attacks in 2021 jeopardized information and control at companies, including the world's largest meat producer and, of course, the Colonial Pipeline. Layla? Well, meanwhile, National Guard cyber units spent two weeks on Cape Cod for training on how to better prepare for ransomware and hacks. Exercise leaders crafted the gaming scenario to provide more specific and applicable training to guardsmen on top of a larger scale national cyber exercises for the National Guard. The East Coast states and utility companies have turned to their guard members to watch for anomalous activity. Major cyber disturbances, particularly ransomware that typically seeks money to release a Attackers' hold on information and digital systems are becoming more pervasive, impacting utility services, school systems, and municipalities. The Guard is developing into a critical resource to remediate these problems at the state and local level, acting as an extension of federal cyber teams which have limited resources to act across the nation. Nick. The leaders of Britain's Military Intelligence Section 5, or MI5, 
and the FBI are joining forces in a bid to warn business leaders and academics of the seriousness of the espionage threat from China. The head of British intelligence says the Communist Party and the government it controls has been engaged in attempts to steal world-leading expertise, technology, research and commercial advantage for years and is getting worse. Officials say Beijing isn't just trying to steal trade secrets and academic research from the West, but also to influence its politics and even use GPS trackers and other technical surveillance against activists in the U.S. speaking out against the Chinese government. Local organizations are urged to reach out to mi 5 Center for the Protection of National Infrastructure and the National Cybersecurity Center proactively rather than wait for an incident to occur. Layla? CISA has released a new advisory suggesting North Korean state-sponsored cyber actors are using the Maui ransomware to target health care and public health sector organizations in the U.S. CISA, the FBI, and the Department of the Treasury report the threat actors have been engaging in these campaigns since at least May of 2021. From a technical standpoint, CISA says the ransomware appears to be designed for manual execution by a remote actor. It would also use a combination of advanced encryption standard, RSA, and XOR encryption to encrypt target files. CISA also wrote that while the initial access vectors for Maui-related incidents are currently unknown, HPH organizations can take various steps to limit the impact of its cyber attacks. These include installing updates for operating systems, software, and firmware as soon as they are released, securing and monitoring remote desktop protocol and other potentially risky services closely, and implementing user training programs programs and phishing exercises. Nick. An ex-Canadian government IT worker has forfeited millions of dollars and pleaded guilty to being one of Russia's most prolific hackers. The 34-year-old Quebec was affiliated with the NetWalker ransomware crew, which has attacked companies, municipalities, hospitals, schools, and universities. Police discovered he was in possession of $27 million in Bitcoin at the time of his arrest. NetWalker operated a ransomware-as-a-service criminal business, offering its malicious software and extortion website to hacker affiliates. Its developers and affiliates split the ransom, or if the victim refuses to pay, a share of the money made from selling the stolen data. The case represents a rare example of a successful arrest and prosecution of a hacker working for a Russia-based cybercrime group. The NetWalker group has roughly 100 members, including affiliates, who extorted at least $40 million from victims. Leaders of the group remain at large. Layla? Wow. Yeah. Well, before we go to break, if you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, make sure you like and subscribe. And if you're watching on YouTube, click on that notification bell for our latest posts related to everything military, cyber, and cybersecurity. When we come back, one of the biggest data breaches in history, plus... Apple's new lockdown mode after the break. Today's network and security monitoring solutions are vulnerable to overload situations that lead to decreased visibility and undetected intrusions. Monitoring applications require hardware to keep up with real-time traffic analysis, making it complex and costly. Your security monitoring solutions may be unable to keep up during cyber attacks or traffic spikes, making intrusion more likely. A new approach is needed to increase network protection and visibility. Accelio simplifies and streamlines your network monitoring for critical security, network, and application analysis. Learn more at Accelio.com. Welcome back. In one of the biggest data breaches in history, an anonymous hacker has claimed to have stolen the personal information of a billion Chinese citizens. Posting on the hacker forum breach forums last week, an online user posting under the name Chinadan said they obtained the information from a leaked Shanghai National Police database. They claimed that the databases contain information on a billion Chinese national residents and several billion case records including names, addresses, national ID number, mobile numbers, and other information. 
Chinadan used a hacker forum to offer more than 23 terabytes of data from the alleged breach for the price of 10 Bitcoin, equivalent to around $200,000. Layla? One of the largest financial service providers in the U.S. has suffered a data breach. Flagstar Bank has notified more than one and a half million customers that their social security numbers have been stolen. Hackers reportedly breached its corporate network between December 3rd and December 4th of last year. After an investigation, the bank discovered on June 2nd of this year that the threat actors accessed sensitive customer details. It's not clear why Flagstar took almost six months to detect the data breach. This is the bank's second incident in two years. Nick. Hey, well, if you're checking into Marriott, cybersecurity at Marriott International is under scrutiny from hackers reportedly stealing, stealing 20 gigabytes of data from one of its hotels. The hotel giant claimed that a threat actor managed to socially engineer an associate at the BWI Airport Marriott in Baltimore, enabling them to exfiltrate data from that individual's computer. The hotel added that this was an isolated event contained within a few hours and that it had no evidence that the threat actor had ad access beyond the files that were accessible to this one associate. Personal information belonging to approximately 300 to 400 people had been exposed in the incident. The incident is the latest in which a malicious third party has tried to extort a victim organization after stealing information. Marriott said it refused to pay the ransom. Maybe we'll hear more from that, Layla. Oh, yes. Well, a big announcement by Apple this week that it plans to introduce an enhanced security setting called Lockdown Mode. The Extreme Optional Protection feature is designed to counter a surge in threats posed by private companies developing state-sponsored surveillance wear such as Pegasus, Devil's Tongue, Predator, and Hermit. The setting will be available on iOS 16, iPad OS 16, and Mac OS Ventura to safeguard high-risk users against highly targeted cyber attacks. Lockdown mode will harden device defenses and strictly limit certain functionalities in order to reduce the attack surface that potentially could be exploited by spyware. This includes blocking most message attachment types, removing support for shared albums and photos, and preventing incoming FaceTime calls from unknown numbers. The feature will not be switched on by default, but it can be accessed by heading to the settings, privacy security to lockdown mode. Nick. Hey, thanks, Layla. So uh, that devil's tongue, right? You don't want to get that thing. That thing's a nasty bugger, right? <laughs> oh, yes, indeed. It hey, well, if, nasty. <laughs> <laughs> if you're in the car listening and rather be watching us, uh, be sure to check us out on our YouTube channel. You could find us at Military Cyber Professionals Association or Mill Cyber Org for all our content related to all things military cyber, STEM, and uh, cybersecurity. Be sure to like and subscribe and click on that notification bell for our latest posts. Well, that's going to do it for us. On behalf of Nick and myself, thank you for watching and listening. You're now in sync with Mill Cyber Sync. We'll see you again next week. This has been the Mill Cyber Sync podcast, brought to you by the Military Cyber Professionals Association. If you're listening to us on your favorite podcast app, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you're watching us on YouTube, Click on the notification bell for our latest posts.